I feel like Quentin Tarantino is just such like a divisive type of director. Everybody loves him, but when his new movies come out, they're just so hard to kind of like get into. It's going to be kind of hard to get through this review, but I'm going to do my best. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. Good to see you. Glad to have you aboard the ship. Uh, if you aren't, welcome back. Good to see you as well. Welcome back aboard the ship. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and get into it. This one's a little bit, not difficult to talk about, but I just feel like it's so divisive sometimes that, ah, Tarantino, man. Anyway, so today on Cinematic Late, we are talking about Quentin Tarantino. Uh, I believe this is his ninth film, titled Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, as you could guess probably by the description and by the title of this video. Essentially what this is, that this takes place back in 1970s Hollywood. Uh, we have Leo DiCaprio's character, who's this Hollywood actor. We have Brad Pitt's character, who's kind of like his go-to, not necessarily his assistant, definitely not his assistant, but he is kind of like his go-to in terms of helping him. He's just, he's, he is actually his stunt double in the movie, which I thought was kind of funny. Then we have Margot Roberts, Robbie's character, uh, who's playing Sharon Tate, which is the only name that I remembered <laughs> out of all of these ones. I think Brad Pitt's like Cliff, and I don't remember Leo DiCaprio's character, but I still enjoy the movie. Anyway, so essentially Sharon Tate is, the, is a real-life person. I believe in the majority of this movie, she is the only real-life person other than like Quentin, or Leo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt's character. Um, but she was gruesomely murdered by Charles Manson and his sort of following. But this isn't necessarily what this movie is about. Essentially, this takes place in Hollywood in the 70s, where Leo DiCaprio's character is trying to make it big. Brad's pick character gets into some weird shit, uh, especially with, like, the Manson family-ish, kind of, but not really. And then there's Sharon Tate, who is sort of just trying to become a Hollywood actress. And this movie's kind of weird. I feel like Tarantino movies always kind of have that weird taste to them when I first see them, but the more I watch them, the more I tend to like them for the most part. There are some outliers uh, in that list. But I did overall enjoy Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I didn't feel like it was his best, but I definitely didn't feel like it was his worst. And that's gonna go ahead and start me off with point number one in Cinematic Late here, is that I felt like it was good, but it's just not that great. Like, I felt like I had a lot of things that I liked about it. Like, I didn't never, never felt like this is completely unbelievable. This just felt like such a Tarantino movie. It had every single style of his in it. With And like, even if you watch this movie not knowing anything about it, if you're just like, I'm a Leo DiCaprio fan or I'm a Brad Pitt fan, if you didn't know this was a Tarantino movie, you knew this was a Tarantino movie just by watching like the opening credits or like just as you continued watching, it's so blatantly obvious. Like he leaves such a distinct style on things. But I feel like this... He always has this weird thing, and I'm probably going to repeat this like 12 times, but he's so good, but also so weird that you don't know if you like it for the most part. Like, I had the same feeling about Inglorious Bastards, which is actually my favorite Tarantino movie. I didn't feel like I liked it because it felt very detracted from the Inglorious Bastards for the majority of the movie. But if you rewatch it probably two or three times, it quickly becomes my favorite, not only because of the characters, but just because of what it has to offer. I feel like Django is very similar. Uh, Django, I feel like I liked a little bit more on the first watch. Hateful Eight was kind of similar. Uh, I just liked how the different characters had all these different stories that interwove, um, which is very much reminiscent of Tarantino's style. But that one, I think, was deliberately a Western with that style to it. Now, Once Upon a Time, time in Hollywood, that happens as well. But it feels like it's more of a love letter than it is actually like him trying to make a movie that he actually cares about in terms of w trying to say something. This is him just saying, I love this thing. This is me how much I love it. And that's okay. This is That's essentially what this series is to me, is I see these movies, I want to talk about them, but they're not gonna be my most popular videos. I feel like that's kind of what Tarantino was going for with this. It's his love letter to the 70s, scattered all throughout his filmography you get those nods very explicitly but this one is his like what's the word what's the phrase like oh not alma mater because that's like when you go to college or something but like his magnum opus i think is what the word is like it's essentially his like grand love letter to the 70s which is fine it's just not my cup of tea fully 
My number two thing about this movie has to be the story. And I think this kind of just piggybacks off of point number one is that it's very scattered. I felt like the characters came together at the right moments, but like the way he tries to interweave a lot of the characters was a little bit scattered in terms of like, what is it, what's going on here? Are we getting to a point anytime soon? Because Sharon Tate was such an exclusive story, I think it was kind of a bad decision to include her if it was anybody else that was not a high profile murder case, essentially. I feel like it would have been a little bit more appealing, but this movie felt like it was often spinning its wheels with great acting. With I don't know how they did it, I, how Tarantino even did it. Like I couldn't care less or couldn't figure out where we were going most of the time, but the acting was great, which is actually point number three. So all of it ties together, very Tarantino. But essentially, like the acting was absolutely great. I loved it. Leo DiCaprio did amazing. Brad Pitt did amazing. Uh, Margot Robbie did amazing. But I don't know what was going on most of the time. Like, it felt like Leo DiCaprio is just an out of, like, his element actor who's just not doing that well right now and trying to stay relevant. Brad Pitt's character is just kind of going with the motions. Like, he doesn't really have a direction as to where he wants to go. They keep drilling into our head that he's got an ex-wife, he loves his dog, and he's, like, essentially Leo DiCaprio's main guy. And then there's Sharon Tate, who we see fairly often throughout the movie. She's getting her fame. She actually goes to see one of her own movies, which I thought was kind of fun. And they kept the original Sharon Tate in there rather than just putting Margot Robbie on top of it, which I think was more of just like a an ode to her, really, for being her having her life cut so short when she was a fairly talented young woman in the time that was just brutally murdered in a way. So... I feel like it's just like so good, but also so spinning its wheels. Like you're watching these people do interesting things or have interesting conversations, but it ultimately goes nowhere. It's good, but it's not great. It's not groundbreaking. This felt like a movie very much catered to Tarantino for the Tarantino fans. Not necessarily meant to be a worldwide like phenomenon, like maybe some of his other ones, but that's just Tarantino. He's doing his own thing. And that's, my thing that I have to give him credit for. He does these amazing movies for the most part, and he just sort of does it for himself. He very carefully chooses, he very carefully writes uh, in terms of what he wants to see. But they're, again, not always gonna be the blockbuster hits, the Star Wars, the Avengers movies. They're not always gonna be that, but they're his movies and they do well just on his own back. And that's very commendable and I gotta give it to the guy. And I think the last point that I wanted to make on this one is that the timeline, uh, since we're talking about story, that the timeline of this is a very much an alternate 1970s, which is kind of an interesting thing that we've never really seen him do before, at least from my memory. Well, I guess the whole Inglorious Bastards thing would be not very accurate, history accurate, I should say. So he's done it in the past, but I feel like just like the the fact that he decided to make a decision at the end of this movie to be alternate of certain things. It was kind of nice, but again, it kind of goes nowhere. It was nice that he showed that respect of what could have happened in terms of history, I guess is the best word. Um, and I just felt like that it was good. It was very sweet of him to do. I don't know if he was necessarily like in love with Sharon Tate based on this and why he felt he needed to make it or what the case may be there. But I feel like he definitely had some kind of thing for her that he wanted to give her that moment in time. And I felt like he very much achieved that. But again, on the back of an okay movie, uh, yeah, kind of. So did he really accomplish anything? To him, yes. To us, uh, I guess you're going to have to tell me down in the comment section down below. Which leads me to me wrapping up this video and letting me ask, having me ask you, rather, what did you think of this movie? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Do you think it's his best movie of all time? Or just let me know your favorite Tarantino movie of all time down in the comment section down below. I would love to find out. While you're down there, leave a like if you guys did like this video. If not, that's okay, too. Um, what else? While you're down there, hit the subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it. New Cinematic Late every single Thursday, as well as I've got some new videos talking about Tenet, uh, one talking about uh, 
play, great place to get movies such as Once Upon a Time in Hollywood for a great affordable price if you're interested in that. So make sure you subscribe and check out the videos for that. They'll be linked up in the corner up there at some point throughout this playtime. Um, but really, other than that, those are my thoughts on Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I hope to see you in the next one.